This here is a two gallon glass jar and I'm going to use it to create an ecosystem for cherry shrimp. I'm not going to use any fancy equipment whatsoever such as CO2, a heater or even a filter. This would be a super low tech build that's perfect if you're on a budget or a beginner. Now let's waste no time and start creating this ecosystem. The first thing that I need to do is to address the hole in the glass. Originally this jar was designed to dispense water and it had a small tap here which would allow you to do that. Obviously it's going to need to be patched up. I've cut this disc from a plastic bottle and it's slightly larger than the diameter of the hole. This here is some aquarium silicone and I'm going to apply it on the inside edge. Now I can take the plastic disc and press it in place on the inside. To finish it off I'll add another ring of silicone all around the disc and then even more on the front side. It's the next day and all the silicone is fully dried. I know it doesn't look the best but it will be at the back of the scape and you won't even be able to see it. Now let's start building the shrimp ecosystem and the first step is to create a base layer of nutrients. What I'm going to use for this is simply some garden topsoil. This stuff is extremely rich in nutrients and it will be the key to healthy plant growth inside the jar. I've used this method in many builds before and it's always worked really well. You really don't need a thick layer and just a centimetre or two will work great. As the topsoil is so high in nutrients it can't be left open like this so I'm going to cap it off with some gravel. If I did leave it open the nutrients would leach out into the water and cause some serious algae problems. This coarse gravel should work nicely. It's completely unnecessary but I had this small amount of coarse sand left over from a different project so I'm just going to use it up in here. This layer doesn't have to look the best right now as I'll add some decorative gravel later. Now let's get to work on the hardscape. To keep with the simplistic theme of this terrarium I want to try and keep the hardscape as straightforward as possible. The main feature is this piece of wood that sits nicely in the centre. This lava rock will not only add some more detail but it's going to help prop up the wood. This is about as simple as hardscapes get but despite that fact I really like how it looks. Left as it is the wood is almost definitely going to float up to the surface as soon as I fill the jar up with water. To stop this from happening I'm going to attach the wood to the rock to hold it down. I'm wedging some tissue in the contact points and then soaking it with some liquid type super glue. This method is easy, strong and best of all it's shrimp safe. Before planting I'm giving everything a really good spray down which will help keep the plants hydrated. The first plant that I'm going to add is this crypt. I've carefully split it into two sections and I think this plant will look best in the midground on either side of the scape. As these plants are quite large forcing them into the gravel can be quite difficult and potentially damaging. Instead I find it much easier to dig a hole with the tweezers or my finger and then simply plant the crypt inside. This is another species of crypt that has slightly darker leaves. I think it will look great towards the centre of the scape just under the wood. Moving on to the background I want a plant that's going to grow nice and tall and have some vibrant coloration to it. This is some rotala that I trimmed out from one of my aquariums. Oftentimes you'll hear that this species requires CO2 in order for it to grow successfully but I've found that's simply not the case. It will grow faster and more vibrant with the addition of CO2 but that doesn't mean it won't thrive in a low tech setup like this one. Now the background's planted I want to add a few more plants for details. I'm going to wedge this Anubius into this gap that's in the wood. This plant is an epithyte so it doesn't need to be planted into the substrate and it will simply pull its nutrients from the water column. Now there's not many more places where I can wedge in these epithetic plants so I'm going to take a different approach and attach them to some rocks instead. 
To attach the plants to the rocks, I'm using some gel type super glue. It doesn't hurt the plants so long as you don't absolutely cover their roots and as I mentioned earlier, it is shrimp safe. Now these can easily be placed anywhere throughout the scape. I think that'll do with the planting. It does look like there's a whole load of empty space but once the plants grow in they'll fill out the space nicely. As I briefly mentioned at the start I want to add some decorative gravel in the foreground. I love the variety in shape and texture of this gravel and I think it's going to add a really nice natural look to this aquarium. I don't know about you, but I think it looks so much better with this layer of gravel on top. Now it's time to fill the jar up with water. The purpose of the bubble wrap is to help disperse the water and stop it from uprooting plants or disrupting the scape. In addition to the bubble wrap, it's important to fill the jar up slowly to minimise any damage. It may not look the best right now, but I'm sure once the plants grow in and establish, this ecosystem is going to completely transform. Two months have passed, and as I'm sure you can see, this jar aquarium has changed a whole lot. I'll talk about the amazing plant growth shortly, but for now I want to address the obvious change, which is the watercolour. The tea-like discoloration is due to the wood leaching tannins into the water. The species of wood I used is known for doing this, and although I didn't really like how it looked at the start, it's really been growing on me. To me, it adds to the natural look and truly makes you feel like you're looking into a slice of nature. As for the plants, they kind of speak for themselves. The stems of Rotala have almost made their way all the way to the surface and they're getting more and more vibrant as they do so. The crypts have also been doing great and all of them have a bunch of new growth. Before adding the shrimp and fast forward into day 100, I want to talk a little bit about the maintenance. There was a slight algae problem in the first couple weeks, but with the help of water changes, it seemed to sort itself out. As of the past month, I've been doing a water change every week or so, but I plan to taper this back to once every two to three weeks. Now that this ecosystem is starting to establish, doing large, unnecessary water changes is just going to cause unbalance. As for lighting, this aquarium has been sitting on a rack under an LED light where it receives 12 hours of light a day. This schedule seems to be working really well, so I'm not going to change anything whatsoever. This shrimp jar ecosystem has now passed 100 days old and it really couldn't be doing better. The addition of these beautiful, vibrant cherry shrimp have really brought the scape to life. It's so relaxing to sit back and watch these tiny creatures go about their day. All in all, I'm extremely happy with how this shrimp jar ecosystem's turned out and I think it just goes to show that you don't need to spend a whole load of money on fancy equipment to create a thriving ecosystem inside your home. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you might be interested in watching this one next.